Hello, uh, I'm Jeff, a member of Holy Trinity Church in Spittle, and I've been asked to tell you something of my story. I came to the Wirral over 30 years ago to work as a medical physicist at the local cancer centre. Uh, but long before that, I was born and brought up in Plymouth. How and why I became a clinical scientist is linked with how and why I came to faith in Jesus Christ. For the most important thing now is not where I'm from or what I've done, but having a living relationship with God through Jesus, his son. As a child, I wasn't sporty like my two brothers, uh, but I was inquisitive. One of those kids who was always asking why. I wanted to understand, to get to the bottom of things. How did grandfather's chiming clock work? How, come to think of it, did the world work? So perhaps it's not surprising that in time, I developed a strong interest in maths and the sciences, together, as it happens, with a deep love of music. Like many children, we were taken to Sunday school and later encouraged, but not forced, to go to church. I heard many Bible stories, especially about Jesus, taught by kind people who clearly believed them. But were they true? You see, I found the miracles a stumbling block. Did they really happen? Could they have happened? And even if some of them could be left to one side or explained naturally, there was one miracle central to the Christian faith that couldn't be ignored namely the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. I wanted to be sure that this had really happened before committing myself to Christianity. <laughs> well, it was during my later teenage years that the big questions became more pressing. What was life about? What were other people? my family and friends living for? What was I living for? Looking back, I can see that I was constantly drawn to two um, basic issues, just as a moth is drawn to the light. First, what can we really know about the world, how it works and why it is the way it is? And second, what's the point of it all, if there is one, and of human existence? Science offered a way to address the first of these, but what about the second one? The one about questions of purpose and meaning? <clears throat> if Christianity were true, then it seemed to fit the bill. In fact, as I would later come to see, it provided a framework which actually embraces both issues. It was early in my second year as a student at Cambridge uh, that matters came to a head. A Christian friend had met with me regularly during my first year to study what the Bible said about God, human beings and Jesus. I understood that if God was real, I needed to live in right relationship with him, that I was separated from him by my sin, and that the only way forward was to trust in Jesus, who had died to save sinners just like me. I knew that famous Bible verse, John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, 
that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. By now I also saw that if God was real, uh, then miracles, even the resurrection of Jesus, were no problem for him. After all, he had created the whole universe from nothing and made it work the way it does. So what was holding me back? I was looking for certainty, something almost like a mathematical proof of the truth of Christianity. Instead, I was being invited to believe, to take the risk of trusting God on the basis of the Bible's testimony about him and what he had done for us in Jesus. I wanted knowledge of one sort, like what we get from science. I was being offered knowledge of another sort, a living personal relationship with the one who made all things. What was there to lose? I think that I'd already concluded that if Christianity were not true, then there was probably no objective meaning or purpose to life, or indeed the universe. And now I became aware of a strong sense of God's love for me. Not as an abstract concept, but as something warm, strong and deep. Love which had taken Jesus, his son, to the cross of Calvary. Some words of Jesus from John chapter 14 verse 6 rang with clarity. I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. It wasn't intellectual compulsion or emotional blackmail, but an invitation to know the joy of sins forgiven, to enter into the fullness of life by the only way there is, by believing in Jesus Christ crucified and risen. The truth, who is not merely conceptual, but human and divine. You see, I had thought I was looking for God, only to find that he had come looking for me. He brought me to an open door and graciously invited me in. All I had to do was to trust him, to exercise the faith which was itself his gift. So I did. And from then on, the Bible, God's written word, came alive to me in a new way. The Holy Spirit, who inspired its writers, together with other Christians, helped me to understand it more clearly and to relate it to my life. Not only did it become luminous in itself, but it shed its light on everything else. It has gone on doing so ever since, helping me to face life's challenges and opportunities in fellowship with other believers and giving us all a sure hope for the fuller life which will be ours when, like Jesus, we too are raised from the dead. In his letter to the Galatians, the Apostle Paul wrote, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. If I echo those words, it isn't to boast about me. I'm still a deeply flawed man who makes many mistakes. 
whose faith is sometimes tested and who often struggles to live in obedience to God and to love other people as I should. But by God's grace and the help of his Spirit, whom he gives to all who put their trust in Jesus, this faith has shaped the rest of my life so far. That includes my choice of career, as I wanted to use my scientific knowledge to be of some benefit to other people. It also includes giving any help or encouragement that I can to others who want to know the way, the truth and the life for themselves. If you'd like to know more about what it means to be a Christian, why not get in touch with us at got.questions at holytrinityspittle.org. We'd love to help you.